Hello again, this is Shy Silverleaf coming to you with a, another method. In this case, it's a replacement method for one of my videos. I am going to show you how to work the circle um, in Tunisian crochet using a double ended hook. In one piece, just going in a spiral, working from the center out. I will also show you how to work it clockwise with a clockwise twist using the same method and <clears throat> beg your pardon the new edition is actually working it with no swirl whatsoever just nice and straight this one's a little more of a headache to do believe it or not that these two but if you're working something like an oval or whatnot then it's definitely worth the headache first of course is your materials list you're going to need a double-ended crochet hook. I am using size J 6 millimeter. Happens to be my favorite for teaching. You're also going to need a ball of yarn or two and I suggest with first learning how to work this since we're working in the round you have two different colors so you can see where on earth your stitches are going. You're also going to need some stitch markers, preferably the locking stitch markers over the slip stitch because as we're working this these tend to fall out just a little more easily. And of course, once you're done, you're going to need a um, yarn needle for sewing in any, weaving in any ends when you're done. Scissors for trimming, of course. And let's get started. To do the counterclockwise swirl, there are two methods that I generally use, one in particular, on how to get started. Uh, make your... The first one is a real pain in the rear end to do, but it's my absolute favorite way to do it, and it's the magic loop method, Blech, if I could speak. What you do is you have your tail, you have your working yarn. You put your working yarn over three fingers, okay, wrap it around loosely three times, and hold the tail between your index finger and your thumb. You're going to take your crochet hook, go up under, the first two wraps, we're kind of in between them. Here's the bottom and we're going over them. Okay, you're going to grab the third one closest to your knuckles, the base of your hand, hook it, pull it through to here. Now don't let go just yet. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to use your index and your thumb and you're going to pinch them together and then slip your fingers so you don't lose anything. Go ahead and tension your yarn. If it doesn't fight with you okay pinch it with your middle finger and your thumb yarn over pull through one snug it down now you can let go it's not going to go anywhere okay um, in order to work this make sure your loop is rather big okay it's going to be slightly different method to do it the standard one of the ways I have seen is you go in yarn over pull through one which is fine but if you yarn over pull through two okay that's starting to wrap it around the hook now let's do it another time and look all it is every time you do that you're just wrapping it around the hook you're not anchoring any of that down so let's undo this okay and whatever yarn color you start with that's going to be your foreground color or what I like to call your overlay color okay the return pass is actually what ends up being your background color all right what you're going to do to work an even number is you're going to go into the loop yarn over pull up there's one two loops now this time you're going to yarn over first go into the loop pull up two now you have four but numbers two and four are actually anchoring down number three. To put another stitch on, you're gonna yarn over, go through again, and pull up a loop. Now we have six. Six, <coughs> beg your pardon, is my favorite number to actually um, work in a circle because it turns out more circular looking even though it's technically a hexagon. Okay, now, what we would do is we would continue on, but I'm going to show you really quick how to get an odd number, just in case that's what your project calls for. For that, first 
you're going to yarn over first, then go in the loop, yarn over and pull through. Now you have three and numbers one, loop one and three are anchoring two. And then you just continue picking up by two. Yarn over, go in the loop, yarn over again, pull through. And now we have five and three and five are anchoring down four. Yarn over, go through, pull up a loop. Okay, that's how we do put an odd number on the hook. And doesn't matter which method you use to create your little loop, either this or the chain one method, both of them picking up the loops to put them on the hook initially are going to be exactly the same. So let me go ahead and pick up my six loops really quick. And I hope you can see this against my new background. One, two, three, four, six. Okay. All right. Now, what you're going to do is in order to make this into a circle, we need to do a return pass. And my return pass is going to be brown. So push. This is the first end of your hook with the working yarn. The second end is over here. And that's where we're going to be working off. So go ahead and push the loops to the opposite end. Pick up your second yarn or second color, whichever the case may be. Lay it on top of your loop. Pinch them together with your middle finger and your thumb. Yarn over, pull through one. Now this actually, I like to mark as my first stitch. So we're going to put a little green marker here on the front. Okay, then yarn over, pull through two, and unless otherwise stated, that's the standard return pass. Yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, tighten up this loop. You're going to continue to yarn over, pull through two, until you have two loops on the hook. Then push it to the front end and turn it back around. Okay, now that we've done that, we need to tighten this bad boy down. Get out of the way. Okay. What I like to do is we have two loops. I'm not sure which one is um, the center one and which one is the outer one. So what I like to do is I like to take the tail, hold on to my work kind of loosely, and pull and watch very carefully to see which one tightens down. Whichever one tightens down is actually the inner one. Okay, this one is tightening down, so that means this one is the outer. So what we want to do is we want to take the one that tightened down. You saw that it tightened down on this side. We want to grab it on the opposite end and give it a tug because the opposite end is connected to the outer. Pull it down very tight. Okay, all the way down. Now we take the tail and we pull that little boy. Oh, come on. If it doesn't twist on us. All the way nice and tight. I'm using cotton so I can give it a good tug. Now pull your last stitch down and we have a lovely little circle. Now here comes the fun part. When looking at, oh get out of the way, looking at this you'll see that your increase forms a little V. The placement of that V and the order in which you work that V is what determines whether you get a counterclockwise swirl, a clockwise swirl, or no swirl at all. This is actually a combination of these two, so I strongly recommend mastering these two before you get to this headache. Okay, just making sure they're in the right order really quick. All right, to do the counterclockwise swirl, first thing you're going to do is, get that out of the way, is you're going, each stitch is made up of two vertical bars. You've got your front vertical bar and you've got your back vertical bar. What you want to do for the counterclockwise twist is you want to work in the, oops, with the yarn in the back. You're going to grab the back vertical bar first. Yarn over, pull through one, then you're going to grab the, take the stitch marker. I can't even talk right now. Take the stitch marker out, set it to the side for a second. Yarn over, pull through one. We have just made the counterclockwise increase and you're going to put it in the first vertical bar. That is our first stitch. Now because we're working in such a small tight area we need to go ahead and work off some stitches until we have two loops otherwise we won't be able to continue working in a circle because our hook doesn't curve. And even if it do, it would still be 
pretty hard in such a small area as this right now. Now we're going to take a look at the next stitch and you will see that this is the yarn over that we did to pick up this stitch before we went into the loop and picked up the next stitch. Remember we were picking them up two at a time. You have the front vertical bar is what is attached to your return pass so the back vertical bar is actually this little bar right here beside it. So you're going to go right beside it using your hook to grab it and pull it forward. I'm sorry if I went very fast on the first one. Yarn over, pull through one. Now work one in your front vertical bar. Okay. What I like to do is I like to go ahead and mark that first vertical bar that we worked in, the back one, so that I have an easier time of making sure I pick up, I do increases in every single stitch if I have six, six, six stitch markers, another tongue twister for you, then I know I've done it right. If I have five or seven, something went seriously wrong. Okay, go ahead and work them off. And back around. Now here is our next one. We're going to go in between, whoop. we're going to not let the stitch get away from us. We're going to go in between, there's the back vertical bar grab it, pull it to the side, and then forward is what you're trying to do. Yarn over, pull through one, shove that down if you need to, and go in between the back and front vertical bars and grab the front vertical bar and put a stitch there too. Go ahead and mark the first one that you worked in and turn it around and return pass until you have Oops. And you're going to continue this lovely, get out of here, delightfulness all the way around. You may have to push your return pass up so you can actually see. Now this one was like this one here where we can see the back vertical bar and the front vertical bar side by side. Front vertical bar connects with the return pass. So we go in between the stitches. We can look in the back. And it's right there, connecting. And pull it to the side, forward, yarn over, pull through. Sample stitch in the front. Stitch marker in the first one. And it's how we're placing what order we are working our increase, as well as how we place it in every single row that determines the counterclockwise twist that we're working on. Now this is going to be a royal pain. It's a small area, but just hang in there. It gets easier the bigger you get it. The bigger you work it, excuse me. Alright, here we go again. Right in between, there's the back vertical bar. Pulling it forward, preferably without splitting the yarn. Oh, come on. And work it in the front as well. Mark it. And we got one more wedge to go. Or, excuse me, one more set of increases to go. And then we'll have all six. Working in a circle. I'm not sure about knitting. I've never knitted a circle by. No, it's definitely in regular crochet, there's actually a formula that you follow, quasi-formula. Let's go ahead and work this last one, and I will explain precisely what I mean. Back, front, marker. I hope you can see this okay against my background. It's a new background, new location, new everything. Even new nail polish. Now we are back around and if you'll notice I have one stitch marker that's different from the other. That's because this is my first. That way I know when I finished around completely. All right. Now for this first wedge, that's what it's going to turn into as you're working is a nice little wedge like a slice of pie. For this first wedge, 
The formula is you're working on the second round, so all you do is subtract one, and that's how many normal stitches you work before you do the increase. Okay, let me show you. Okay, we have round two, two stitches. Only one of them is going to be a regular simple stitch. The next one, we're going to work the same increase that we did in the previous row. You're going to go in between the stitches, grab the back vertical bar, if it will cooperate, pull it to the side and forward, simple stitch in that, and then simple stitch in the front vertical bar, and then take your stitch marker and put it in the first, first part of your increase first stitch of your increase, okay? Not the first stitch of the wedge, the, just the first stitch of the increase. Okay, turn it around, and we're still working until we have, working it off until we have two loops on the hook. Come on, Eve. And just so you know, this is a number four worsted weight cotton yarn. I like cotton for practicing and teaching because I can rip it apart a lot more times than let's say wool wool you could probably only rip it apart one and then you got to reclaim the yarn before you can use it again because it gets all nice and kinky kinked up excuse me shame on me all right we're going to repeat for the next for the rest of the way around one simple and a pinch to grow an inch it's my favorite way of saying an increase Move the marker up into the first part of the increase and work it off. I'm going a little quicker because I am going to guess that you have practiced the increase enough that I don't have to slow down quite as much. Okay, next wedge. Oop, get back here. One simple. Work off or return pass. Okay. Once again, simple, one simple, back, front. Ever forget which round you're on? What number round, excuse me, that you're on? All you have to do is count your normal stitches and add one. Works in reverse. All right, next wedge. I know it's a little annoying having all these little things in your way, but just shove them out of the way, and as you get bigger, you'll find they won't get in your way because they'll be spread out more. So, one simple. Oh, come on. Back only front only my hook was trying to grab both the back and the front at the same time so you got to watch out for that and you got to watch for possibility of yarn splitting hopefully you won't have that problem and return pass move my hand so you can actually see it then we'll get along famously one simple You gotta watch the other end because sometimes it likes to hook the yarn. Come on, you. Back. Front. Move your marker. Excuse the furnace. It's gonna kick on and off throughout. Just continue that pattern all the way around, increasing the number of simple stitches or normal stitches that you do with each round by one. And right now, you 
can't really see it swirling. It just looks like kind of a jumbled mess. But in the next few rounds, you'll see it. So we are now on round three. So it's two simples. One, two simples, and a pinch to grow an inch. Back. Front. Come on, you. Move your marker up. Now that we're a little bigger, we actually don't have to squash it down to having just two loops on the hook. We can actually have three loops on the hook, which is a little more secure. Oh, come on. Provided your yard doesn't fight you. down there. Front. Move your marker up. Oh, word of warning, if you're crocheting with headphones on, headphones on, watch your cord. I have almost crocheted my headphone cord into the piece I was working a couple of times. Oops. take much to back it up if you go a little far. One, two, back loop, front loop, marker. And see now they're not clinking together quite as much because they're getting a little more space from each other. And you can work it down to two. I just prefer to have three or even four on the hook. It makes me feel like they're not going to fall off quite as easily. So that was two simple stitches and my increase of back and front. Move this up. Honestly, we can move this into the back leg because that's where our stitches are going instead of the front leg. That would make a wee bit of more sense. And I'm only moving those that I have just worked. I'm putting my thumb beside them. You can keep it in the front. Sorry, I've been playing with my baby a lot and I say zoop when I pick him up off the floor. The little sweet fella has gotten big. Anywho, you don't want to hear about that. So, going around. And one, two, back, front. Move stitch marker up into the last leg. Remember, we just changed it to the last leg. I moved it here because this is where we're putting our stitch each and every time is on this last leg, and that's what's going to help shove the stitches into the counterclockwise twist, going this way, because you can follow every single um, front leg that we did. And the V itself is splitting like this, so that's helping as well. It's the combination of the split and then working in the front leg, working the back leg first and then the front leg that helps give it its counterclockwise twist. Back. Front. 
and into the second leg. Okay, now we spread it out and it still doesn't look like it's twisting. Okay, we're going to give it one more row, row number four, and you should really see it. So, oh, come on, you. So, one, two, three simple stitches this time, and then back. And marker. Preferably with your out your hair and getting all tangled up and everything you're trying to do. Return pass. Now, if you grow it really big, what you may find is you're not able to work the entire slice of wedge on a single go with your hook on the forward pass is what going forward is called. You may find that you'll have to work part of it, return pass off some, and then work the other part of it and return pass off. Sorry if my nails were too high for that. Just work it as you can. One, two, three, just don't lose count. Back. Come on, you. Now, you look at it, now that we've hit the fourth row, you can really see that it's starting to swirl. And the bigger you make it, the more it's going to swirl until eventually it'll come back around to where your original um, first stitch was. So what may be a fun idea is follow this down, put a little stitch marker here, in your first stitch without splitting the lousy thing or just leave it there and put a second one going up and see if we take a straight piece of paper and lay it straight across you can see there's the stitches coming off and there's the swirl going beyond if we try to line it up you really can't because of that swirl And we work it, and I am going to guess that by now you know, oops, once again I went a little too far, so what I like to do is pull my hook out without pulling on my, excuse me, return pass working yarn, and I go in the pre, slip my hook in the previous loop, and slip my hook back into the return pass loop so that I have three loops on the hook, and then I pull it off. So it's nice and secure and I don't end up ripping it to who knows when and losing all of this lovely work. Okay. I will see you in round six. And I'll show you how to end this thing. Alright. You're going to work your last wedge as normal. Okay. One, two, three. Stop that. Five since I'm on round six and then a pinch. Still moving those stitch markers up in that last leg, which helps us differentiate between the last stitch of the previous wedge and the first stitch of the next one. Which is why I had you move them. Work it off. Tunisian simple stitch is a little like knitting in that the edges like to curl if you do just pure simple stitch. So what I like to do is I like to do a Tunisian reverse stitch around the whole entire edge and as you can see that lays nice and flat. Okay. 
So go ahead and work all of the stitches off. Push it back to the front. Normally I would clip that. Okay, you're going to work it in the back side, but when we get to the increase, we're still gonna have to work to an increase, otherwise it's gonna cup up, unless that's what you want. Okay, so working into the back leg, pull that tight, you're going to, oh, nuts. Okay, with the yarn behind the hook is normal reverse stitch. Sorry, I've been working a um, Mobius wrap in Tunisian, which hopefully I will get it done enough that I can show you guys. Um, and I've been working half the pattern forwards and half the pattern basically completely reversed. So, and the yarn placement makes a huge difference in the reverse stitches. So, with yarn behind the hook, enter in the back leg, yarn over, pull through one, pull through one. Yarn in back, and you just keep doing your reverse stitch until you come still in pattern to your increase, which will be right here. We're going to work it into this in the same order as we've been working it. Back leg first, then we're going to reach between the two and pull the front leg back. Pull it towards the rear instead of towards the front. And pull through one, pull through one. And there's your increase. And I'm just going to leave my stitch marker right where it's at. And you just keep doing that all the way around. That's one. Two, three, four, five, six. Since we're doing the bind off in round seven, we work six of those. Then the increase, back, dive after that front, pull through. All the way around. Oh, lovely. Beware of the knot. It'll try to get you. Okay. One. Oh, come on, you. That's trying to split on me. There. Here's the increase. I almost went right past it. Shame on me. Back leg. In between. Front leg. And we're good. Excuse me. Back vertical bar. In between front vertical bar. I've been trying to knit a Mo Mobius wrap too. That's where the uh, knit stitches have legs. Tunisian stitches have vertical bars. Either way, I hope you're getting the information that you need. Okay, and we're to the increase, and that was the back vertical bar. Dive in after the front vertical bar. And we're... Now your last stitch is going to be a little tricky. But we'll work it together. And as I'm going around, I'm kind of feeling for that. To help tell me when I need to do. Oh no, I hate when that happens. Sorry. Little red fuzzy against white yarn. You know how crazy that drives me. It's 
like putting a red flashing light against right in the middle of snow. Have to get rid of it or bury it. Here's our last one. I'm actually going to loosen this up just a hair so I can get at everything I need. Okay, here's the stitch that kind of flips over where you ended your second yarn. I'm going to move that to the back and out of the way. You're going to go into the back of it. Then you're going to reach you're going to have to fight with it. Push that down. That little bar down. That little bar. Okay, basically I pushed the white part down, the brown part up, so I can grab it. I'm shoving the brown out of the way so I can bring it back. Kind of wiggling the hook just a little to get it through, and da da da! You just Cut the two, pull it through this, and you're done. Let's see, a little coaxing. That lays nice and flat. Isn't that pretty? Oh, one more thing. If you don't want to fiddle with these, after you hit row two, possibly three, all you have to do to remember where to, pla to place your increase is you're looking for the V of the row below. And for the counterclockwise, you want to put it in the second, your increase in the second part of the V below. Okay, the very last part. And that will help you remember. Hope you enjoyed learning how, relearning, some of you, but learning how to make a counterclockwise sw swirl working in a spiral in Tunisian crochet. I will see you in part two when we cover the clockwise swirl. So like, subscribe, and I will see you next time with Hook It Ready.